mentioned in passing, like a quadrille. Uh-huh. And what, what defines a quadrille? Let me start by uh, um, taking the present day. Um, people in the modern square dance movement, uh, which is about as far removed from Northeastern style as you can get in some ways, it's the, the, the relation to the music is almost entirely absent. The, you, you dance and you call to the beat, but not to the phrase. And the swings are, are short and they're fairly infrequent and they're sort of cursory. They're just walk once around and on to the next thing. Um, people in that network tend to refer to anything, any phrased square as a quadrille. And people, people uh, refer to the squares I call as quadrilles where I wouldn't necessarily call them that. Uh, but there, there is a grain of truth in that, in that I think the um, the New England squares and Northeastern squares were much more influenced by the quadrille tradition, um, relatively speaking, than in other parts of the country. You've got these two great strains of, of dance figures, the, the quadrille movements like ladies' chain, right and left, things that are typically done across the set with the opposite couple. And then you've got the, the visiting couple, uh, more, more of a circular motion, uh, things like uh, figure eights, leading around the lady, and so forth, uh, around that couple and swing at the wall. Very, very circular, very fluid motion, and typically done if it's in a four couple square, it will be visiting your way around the square rather than across. Um, and the, um, I would say that most, from what I know, most regional styles of square dancing are a blend of, of both of those traditions, but uh, Northeastern and New England squares. Uh, the, the quadrille influence is stronger than the visiting couple influence. And uh, I think it's true that um, old-time callers, callers who went back to the, the early 20th century in New England, uh, were likely to refer to their squares as quadrilles, where in, in other parts of the country that wouldn't be as true as often. So a, a quadrille, uh, historically a quadrille is a dance in typically five figures um, that became fashionable in the early 19th century. And the, the figures were short, which is one reason they could do five in a row with the same partner. Uh, there would be a, a pause in the music, there'd be different pieces of music for each of the five figures. The first one might be in six, eight, the next one might be in two, four, and, and so forth. Um, so, and they'd, they'd be different melodies and there would be a break in the music each figure might last only about one minute, and you would do a couple of things with the opposite couple. The heads would do it, the sides would do it, and then you'd wait for the next piece of music and do something else with, with the opposite couple. And typically in a five-figure quadrille, there might be one figure that was a visit where each couple would work its way around the set, but mostly it was across the set. And uh, over the years, uh, the, the quadrille evolved into the 20th century New England square dance. The, the figures became longer and some of them would be dropped. Uh, you would, instead of uh, figures one, two, three, four, five, you might do one, two, three, and five, or one, three, and five out of an existing set of music. Um, and you might do figure one four times instead of twice. And eventually, it got to the point where um, some of the visiting couple figures, which seemed to come from other traditions, would be introduced into New England and be enjoyed along with the quadrilles. Or, or you know, they, they would refer to it as one figure of a quadrille, but it, it might be a dance from uh, Western New York or uh, somewhere in the mid-Atlantic states or the, the near Midwest. Um, Beth Tolman and Ralph Page, in their country dance book, 1937, uh, said that the, um, the radio barn dance with its rhyming collar has had an influence on New England style. So almost immediately, as, as soon as you got mass communication, radio, recordings, um, people writing and publishing and, and reading each other's books and articles, um, as soon as that became important in the early 20th century, uh, you had cross-fertilization of, of styles. And so there, there, there hasn't been anything, any such thing as a pure New England style probably since the 1920s.